Michael Van Runkle here for HotCars.com. I'm here at Monterey Car Week in a new Lucid Air. I'm here with Lucid's VP of Design and Brand, Derek Jenkins and Dave Butchko. He works in PR for Lucid and he set this up for me, so thanks Dave for bringing me out. We're gonna take a test drive in this Lucid Air. I'm not allowed to drive, but Derek's gonna show off what we got, so let's get started. Awesome, so we're in the uh, Lucid Air. This is a grand touring uh, version of the car. Um, this is a pre-production car, so it's come out of Arizona from our assembly line in our factory. And uh, let's let's take it for a run. Definitely. Are you ready? Super excited. I think I'm ready. All but right, I've heard go. things. <laughs> so tell me about this car in specific. What trim level are we in? So this is the Grand Touring. Um, so it is the top of the line, except for the Dream, the limited Dream Edition that we're launching uh, is actually higher than this. This car starts at 139. Um, it's over 500 miles range, just under a thousand horsepower and zero to 60 in two and a half seconds. Oh boy. Uh, quick car. Um, <laughs> we're in comfort mode now. Comfort mode is the default mode. Uh, also is our eco mode. So um, the car always defaults back to that. And if you want a little bit more, you can go up to sport mode or sport plus gives you a little bit firmer ride. Cool, um, and comfort mode is, is that strictly for acceleration and performance or does that also affect you know the suspension settings, the steering comfort weight? Comfort is uh, you get a little softer ride and it also detunes the power to optimize for um, range. So we always default back to that. That's part of our range strategy. And then when you go up to sport, um, it firms up the suspension gives you uh, more power in Sport Plus, again, a notch up from there. And does comfort mode, like, say you're on the freeway, will it will it settle the car to, to make it lower for aero? No, our, our ride height is, is fixed in this version of the car. We will have a variable ride height at a later time. But uh, this version of the car that we're launching with for Dream Edition and Grand Touring will be at a fixed height. Well, I can say that the suspension feels pretty smooth roads here in uh, Monterey aren't the best but you know the, the what we would call the skateboard layout of the battery always helps electric vehicles keep that low center of grab and he's not punching it but uh, we're getting a little acceleration you know, some minor teaser that you can you can hear a little bit of the engine as it whizzes up but it's it's altogether a very quiet ride we're talking but I'm not hearing any of the, like sort of suspension creaks that people worry about with EVs. We just went over a speed bump right at the perfect time. <laughs> it gives you that feeling in your stomach like you go over a hill and all yeah. of a sudden you're, you're squashed back a little. And we're just here on a residential road. Derek just put it in the sport. You can't see the speedometer and you can't see his feet so we don't know how much he's punching it. But I mean you can see he's grinning a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it never gets old. Yeah, yeah. There's just something about that instantaneously available torque. So, as as we were prepping for this, I checked out the tires. They're, I believe, 265 at the rear, 245 at the front. Correct. 21 inch wheels. Um, what's the the power split? Uh, this is a dual motor, correct? Yes. And what's the default front to rear? There's obviously a rear bias. We have more power going to the rear wheel. Um, and, uh, and then the front's variable based on based on traction. Well, it didn't sound like there was any wheel spin, but again, this the ride is, is so smooth and quiet that you might not even notice if you're starting to break traction. Right. And one, one thing I would point out is we have a pretty strong regen in this car, and we keep it at that as a default setting. So I'm going to let off right now, and you'll get a feel for that. That's all regen. You know, wow. so, so um, will it come to a complete stop? It will. Like I'll do that now. Cool. You know, if we were to come up to the to the light here, I'm going to fall short. But you know, you yeah. And it's really great. I find it really great for obviously traffic, um, but also um, even performance driving. You know, you almost use it like a downshift. You know. <laughs> well, you can see you'll have no trouble merging onto the highway. <laughs> no. There is a little bit of traffic, everyone's here for car week, but 
I mean, even as we were sitting in the hotel lot, this thing was definitely attracting a crowd because everyone has been hearing about Lucid and they're excited to finally see the car, see the design, see how it looks in person because photos never do it justice. We're here on the interior. It's pretty nice. We got Alcantara, got screens everywhere. Um, a lot of these sort of tactile functions, I don't want to touch anything because I don't want to mess it up while we're driving. But we got this little roll thing here. We got AC going. It's all very nice, very roomy. We got panoramic glass. It's tinted so that you don't get too much sun in your eyes. It's a beautiful day. We both have sunglasses on. But here we are on a nice smooth road and I can tell he wants to hit it. part is, you know, getting used to really fast cars, you expect at least a little bit of that let off for a gear shift, not mm -hmm. so much with electric cars. It's like a kind of warp speed um, psychological thing that happens. I mean, we have a pretty incredible torque curve, you know, I, I've been in a lot of fast electric cars and the, the, the tendency is this kind of really jolting start, which is awesome. And then it kind of tops off at 40, 45, 50 miles an hour, and then it levels out. Where the, this just has this kind of like continuously, like it feels like the, the torque is growing as you're going, you know, which is just an awesome experience, you know. It is a good feeling. I slept in a tent last night at Laguna Seca. <laughs> My back is a little messed up, and it feels like I was getting all lined up. <laughs> I don't need to hit the chiropractor That's after great. this. But one thing I noticed, we were at a little bit of a higher speed there. Yeah. And not a lot of wind noise. And I know you guys really focused on the exterior design to reduce that since there isn't the sound of an internal combustion engine to sort of drown out what's going on in the world around us. So what are some of the little details that, yeah. that you Yeah, I mean, we've been pretty obsessive with NPH, noise, vibration, and harshness. Truth be told, these are our first generation window and door seals. We we're about to go to our second generation. So, you, you know, we do sense some wind noise or uh, 45 miles an hour plus is when you normally get it. And we're working hard to eliminate that. You can see really no rattles in the car. It's really set up very firm. Everything's well dampened um, just to give you that, that really insulated feeling, you know, which is super important. And the car's got this kind of duality in its character. You know, it does really well. Um, as a cruiser, and then you unleash it, and you set it, and in, in, I'm in Sport Plus now, I really get to enjoy a little bit more of the handling characteristics of the car, which is great, you know? Yeah, now we, we all know electric cars tend to be on the heavier side, simply because of the batteries, but I'm not feeling a ton of body roll we're in, as Derek just said, Sport Plus, but like not a lot of tipping going on, I think I felt the wheel slip just a second when you really punched it coming out of the curve back there. Yeah, every once in a while it, it finds its groove, um, you know, uh, to get maximum out of the acceleration. Can do another little punch here. Make sure I'm sitting up straight. Get your adjustment in. <laughs> Obviously, in addition to regen, you gotta have pretty serious brakes on a, a vehicle yeah. that can go this fast and weigh this much. Um, they seem sufficient. Yeah, they do the job. They are really uh, very uh, accurate. Um, they do have. A, you do have to put a little bit more input in, you know. But you get that. You really have a good feeling for for the braking and, and what the limits are. Um, but it's it's a critical part of obviously harnessing that much power. I can't wait to actually drive one of these things when once we're allowed to. Um, but I'm curious if you could explain sort of your view of the dash and the steering wheel. What what are those ergonomics like that you specifically designed? For yeah. This so you know, obviously we're in this kind of touch era, and you know we made a very decisive um, intent with the uh, displays. We have our 34-inch cockpit display here, um, and it's curved. Everything's optimized for driver's view, so I have all my more mundane features on the left, easy access, front doors, windows, all my latches, and so on. 
all my core drive information. We have power on the right. We have charge on the left. So that's that regen speed. We have the camera angles obfuscating the view of the speedometer. Just okay. So everyone knows. So that that all everything I just described is all in one easy to read display. It's very communicative. We have our trip computer, trip computer information on the left, and then we have a location for widgets on the right. Um, on the right hand side is all of our communication and media, as well as navigation, all within easy touch for the driver. But all those th uh, three applications, uh, I, if they're open up top, I can swipe down and access them below um, in, in our uh, quick touch vehicle settings display as well. So the passenger can then use the application easily. And then the quick controls uh, here is just one touch for all the simple things like your drive modes, any kind of mirror adjustment, steering wheel adjustment. It's all one touch away. We don't force people down into menu after menu after menu. And then it's simple things like brightness, glove box button. Um, if I want to go in and do more finite adjustments to my seat, I can do that here. I also have the analog switches on the side of the seat, which we're all well trained on. Um, so we make it easy. Um, if you want to uh, do the uh, your back adjustment, we can give you a little stretch while oh, you're here. Oh, now I'm getting a massage. <laughs> All right. You know, I mean, why not? That's uh, that's part of the luxury experience, I think. And then even things like our ambient lighting, our screen colors. There's ambient lighting throughout the interior at night, and we can adjust that to different tones. Um, so you have a completely different vibe uh, throughout the interior. And then we have, of course, all of our um, charge metrics uh, you can uh, check up on. Other than that, it's a super straightforward system. And then, of course, additional climate control, um, but also climate control settings you can do uh, through the analog switches as well. Volume, try to keep everything one touch away, you know, and, and stay away from that, uh, that deep menu. Well, it seems like a very thought out interior and uh, I'm sure you're happy to hear me say that since I you, am. you helped to think it out. We sweat the details to keep it simple. You know, I think the, the modern automobile has gotten far too complex in, in many ways. And I think ease of use has been a huge priority for us. Well, I can't wait to uh, find out a little bit more of the official stats. I know you guys are planning to unveil sort of official range estimates soon official weight soon, um, all the details that gearheads want to know a little bit more about. I'm most excited, of course, to eventually drive it and get to feel that acceleration from the driver's seat. But uh, thank you, Derek, for this test drive. Thanks, Dave, again, for setting this up. This was a ton of fun. Um, and thank you for watching. I hope you learned something today. Thank you, man. That was great.